Señora, yo no los conozco. Welcome to a special episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Supernatural. In honor of the new movie, The Curse of La Llorona, we're doing something slightly different. We'll be looking for the titular antagonist, La Llorona, to see if there's any truth to the storied legend. I tried to roll those R's, Carly. I know, I heard you like give up, it's fine. I guess this is a good point to bring up. Yeah. I'm half Mexican. Yeah, and I'm Salvadorian, so my family's from El Salvador. So. You speak fluent Spanish, though. I, I do not, I'm ashamed in my family. I speak it enough. You say La Llorona. La Llorona. But I wouldn't say like La Llorona. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, you could. Now Shane. <laughs> La Llorona. Wow. Wait, wait. Now I gotta do it better than him. Can you roll? Can you roll the extended arm like a La Llorona? Yeah, La Llorona. Oh is that too? God. Can you put? I'm too getting out Spanish by the white guy. Can you what put like? too much mustard on it? Like, yes. Because then it's you're just yeah. being obnoxious. Yeah. yeah. Right? Well, that was certainly good stuff. We should get into uh, finding La Llorona yes. now. The Curse of La Llorona is the story of a single mother fighting to save her family from the evil La Llorona, or weeping woman, who wants to steal her children and make them her own. Because La Llorona is an important cultural figure in storytelling traditions not just in Mexico and the US, but throughout the Latinx world, we've invited our friend Curly from BuzzFeed's Pero Like to come with us on this journey. Just jumping into this. Yeah. Let's get it out of the way. Yeah. Shaniac or Bugara? You know this, I'm a Bugara. Like, I'm definitely a Bugara. But, but I love him. But I'm thankful for you because yeah. every time no, 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 I'm no, freaking no. out with you, I'm like, oh! Don't step over like, the you'll aisle. say something and Don't I'm like, reach over the aisle. Oh <laughs> well, Curly and I are thick as thieves, Ryan. Yeah. You can't take that away from us. Let's just, let's just, let's just, let's just get into okay. it. La Llorona's mythology dates back to pre-colonization, and until more recently, she had been largely a figure of oral storytelling. Because of this, the story of La Llorona can vary widely between families. I'm trying to figure out where this falls because it so sounds part <laughs> urban legend, part cryptid. Is it somewhere in the it's middle of this It's a little bit of all? everything, which I think is why it's so universal, which is why like no Latin country, no matter who you talk to, everybody wants to claim it as their own story. Everyone is yeah. like, this is my story, this is us, this is, and it's like, this is kind of universal at this point. According to one popular legend, La Llorona was abandoned by the man she loved and left to raise their children alone. Overcome with grief over lost love, or perhaps filled with the desire to exact revenge on her betraying lover, she murdered her children and threw their bodies in a river. She died of her despair, and as punishment for her murders, she was condemned to wander the world in search of the bodies of her dead children. You know, I think that's a fair sentence, to be honest. You murder your children, maybe you have to search for them forever in the afterlife. Forever, yeah. Yeah, it's just some misplaced anger there. You know, her husband. You think? You think that's sure. misplaced? Yeah, I think a little bit. <laughs> do you think bit. she went too far? Where do you think she went too far? When she killed her kids. <laughs> I'm sorry, I came down on you a little hard. <laughs> I know, I was like, poor. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. While many La Llorona encounters and stories encourage audiences to fear a spirit actively looking to do harm, other tellings are meant more as a parable, where listeners merely learn from the woes of the weeping woman. I think it's important to scare children like this. Yeah, I, I think, think so. that's good. I think it's great too. Legit, like before La Llorona, I was a happy little kid. I lived Jesus a great life. Christ. Do you know what I mean? And then we were like sleeping on like a maca. What are they called? A hammock? Oh, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. a tia came up one day and just changed my life. She was cleaning and she could hear somebody crying outside of the window. And so she looked out and she saw this woman with like all black eyes, like no white in the eyeballs and super, super like yellow skin and like fur. So it's fur? like a okay, super. Now that's a new one. Yeah, they add a little bit. Of, I think that's where they add a little bit. I have no knowledge of this whatsoever. Were there any Polish legends, Shane, that were threatening you with death? All we had was good old Santa Claus and the, the worst. <laughs> The worst you'd get Santa was Claus. no presents. Wow. wow. You know, and that was very that's devastating. For me, it's been a way, it was a way to make me behave as a child. Mm. My, my mom used it as a, a disciplinary technique. That's what they do. So she told me that pretty much if I didn't make my bed, La Llorona would come would drown you. me in my sleep. Yeah. If you wonder why I am the way I am, it's because I've been threatened with death <laughs> since I was uh, able to comprehend oh language. My God. One scholar has related that her family's La Llorona story, which was passed down matrilineally, was a tale of a woman who was jealous her husband showed more love for their children than her. She told him her concerns, and when he didn't change, she drowned their children in the river. Her husband left her, and she died of loneliness. When she got to heaven, God told her she could not get in until she found the souls of the children, and she now wanders the earth in search of them. 
in this version, La Llorona's not necessarily a threat to anyone outside her own family. She would reportedly find her way onto the scholar's family farm and cry in the fields, creating a moaning noise on windy nights. You gotta know that if we do hear a woman who is sobbing, moaning, a, a ghastly shriek, I am going to bolt in the direction of that. I will that too, I will fam. too. With a camera. Fam. Yeah. And unfortunately for this very real woman, I'm gonna be like, I see that you're crying! <laughs> can, you, can you let me pinch you? To yeah. prove that my hand does not go through your body. Just imagine yeah. the plight of this woman too. She's in, she's having a very emotional probably the worst day of her life. Emotional public moment, and now three grown men are charging at her full force with ma cameras. Ma going, we got you. <laughs> Get the net. <laughs> um, in other tellings, La Llorona's lover was a man from a higher class who betrayed her to pursue a woman more befitting his social standing. While La Llorona's myth predates her, this version parallels to the story of La Malinche, also known as Doña Marina. Doña Marina was a slave offered to the Spanish conquistador Hernán Cortés by a Mayan lord. She served as his translator, cultural mediator, as well as concubine. Cortés had a child with Doña Marina, then abandoned her when his upper-class Spanish wife arrived. Figuratively, her murdered children could be seen as the millions of natives who fell under Spanish rule. Yeah, I mean, well, La Malinche is kind of like an iconic figure as well. I've never heard La Malinche been put in with La Llorona, like ever. This is sort of a cinematic universe yeah. where people yeah. are starting to do crossovers. Yeah, and... exactly. Well, I think it's also like, it's trying to assign historical value to a tall tale. Mm -hmm. This feels like fan fiction. But this feels like a shoehorn, to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the story still holds value as a legend passed down from generations. Mm -hmm. But I think that can be said for like a lot of spirits that they're kind of just like legends that people pass on and I feel like they do sometimes gain power because so many humans are giving it energy. Yeah, she yeah. gets around. Well, now that we've learned the history, or I guess the lore, why don't we go try and find this woman? Mm -hmm. And maybe she could tell us for herself what's the actual tale. Let's do it. Wouldn't that be something? While there have been unnerving sightings of La Llorona all across North America, from Mexico City to Chicago to Texas, we're going to be looking for her in two of the most active areas of reported sightings, Southern California and New Mexico. Our first stop in our search for La Llorona is the Aguamansa Pioneer Cemetery in Colton, California. Aguamansa served as the cemetery for the first non-native settlement in the San Bernardino Valley. The settlers first arrived in the area in the 1830s, and the cemetery is the last remaining piece of the original settlements. All right, so here we are at Aguamansa Memorial yes. or Cemetery. Yes! Okay. Wow. <laughs> Very serene and creepy. It's nice to have some enthusiasm here. I'm excited, I yo. I suppose. Curly, would you like to maybe call out to her? Yes. Señora Llorona, deja de ser chillona. Gracias por tenernos aquí en tu casa. Si tú quieres llevarte a alguien, llévase a Shane. Oh, Gracias. he said my name for sure. <laughs> Crucial to our search, Aguamanza is also located next to a canal and close to the Santa Ana River. La Llorona is said to haunt riverbanks and lake shores. Reports on her powers vary, but some include the ability to hover above water or even transform into a flock of birds. That's good. That's a superpower. She's like an anamorph. That would be horrifying if we're like, we got you cornered, then just doves. Just flies off. Oh, I dude, mean, you're thinking doves? I was thinking doves, well, I was but thinking I meant crows. crows. Crows is scary. Love, I love a crow. That's yeah. pretty vague. Like, what if it's like pelicans? Like, huge. <laughs> Like a flock of pelicans. Or little little golden finches. Or hummingbirds. <laughs> La Llorona is known to wear white and rumored to seduce men who hear her crying and then kill them. Said to reveal cultural anxieties surrounding sex, La Llorona is often posed as a femme fatale or sexual predator. In Rodolfo Anaya's 1972 novel, Bless Me Ultima, La Llorona is described as a demon that wanders riverbanks and, quote, seeks the blood of boys and men to drink, end quote. La Llorona also has a bit of a femme fatale side of her where she does go after men. Bad boys. And what do you know? Three ripe young men. Show her your biceps, Ryan. I'm not going to show her my <laughs> Come on, <laughs> show her your biceps. Hey, <laughs> why don't you show her your legs? Oh, I'll show her my legs. Yeah, give her some her legs. Calves. Here. I got good calves. Her, you hear that, La Llorona? I'm giving you two free tickets to the Shane Madej leg these. show. I got some spicy calves coming your Look way, at these lady. calves. Hope you got a glass of water because here. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> 
Oh, damn. Uh oh. No, 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 no. It's too sexy, senor. No, no, no. Beautiful. This is for you. Look at that cab action. Why don't you guys keep exploring? I'll stand here in the dark for 30 minutes and see if anything happens to me. Here we are, guys. Here we are. Here we are. Well, this is the uh, chapel on site in the cemetery. And yeah, that's pretty spooky. I will say, some people think she's a demon, which obviously, you know, my track record, record with demons, not my favorite. So they actually have a little La Llorona shrine right here. Creepy. Also, my girl Guadalupe is here. That's my girl, I'm happy she's here. If she's here, no one can mess with us. We're reaching out to whoever lives inside this chapel. Hopefully that is La Llorona. Now La Llorona, we came here all the way from Los Angeles. We came here to find out why you drowned your children. <sighs> Look, I'm not here to judge you, I just wanna know why. Maybe he's here to judge you. Of course I'm here to judge you. She drowned her children. I don't think it's cool that you drowned your kids, lady. We're going to turn on a device here that may help you speak to us. Spirits of this chapel, you know that new sound you were looking for? Listen to this. You like that? I love it. That's good, right? Yeah. Baby. Ooh, ch a, ch a chatterbox is here tonight. Ask who's inside here. Hay alguna persona aquí adentro? ¿Cómo te llamas? Nos puede decir tu, su Who's nombre? That? I couldn't even understand that. That was so fast. But it sounded like Spanish. That sounded like hello. Yeah, we're gonna need to hear more than one or two words in a row. Do you hear that? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Yo, that was fucking crazy. <laughs> Who was that? Thank you They're so much. You. Who was that? That was pretty crazy. That was wow. a direct response to the thing you said. Yeah, you sound surprised. I, I mean, I loved it. What do you know about La Llorona? Twist your arm in a box. <laughs> said twist your arm in a box? Well, sort of, sort of <laughs> twist your arm in a box? Sort of makes the other one a little less special. <laughs> <laughs> Next in our search, we will travel to La Llorona Park in Las Cruces, New Mexico, where many locals claim to have seen her along the banks of the Rio Grande. We're lucky enough to be joined by one of these locals, willing to share her story. Okay, so here we are in Las Cruces, New Mexico, with Araceli to tell us about her experience with La Llorona. So I was about 12 years old, and I see like this silhouette. It's like a figure, and I, I can't see a face. I can't see you no know, like features. So I'm making this figure out, and I notice that I can't see their feet. Like their feet aren't touching the ground. And I, right then I start getting like, okay, what the heck? And then like right then I hear la wails of the Yorona, yeah. mm -hmm. and I book it. And I'm like knocking on the door. And by the time like I figured out what I was looking at, my cousin was already gone. Mm -hmm. So I think she had seen her before I did. So I'm pounding on the front door, like, please somebody let me in. And I was crying, but I didn't want to like make any noise because the Yorona was right there. I didn't <laughs> want her to get me. Mm -hmm. And finally somebody opens the door and I just like run in and I like jump under the covers and I'm just like crying. Had you known what she was when you saw her? Oh, or yes. were you like, that is La Yorona? Yeah. Well, like, I was like, what is that? But then as soon as I heard like the whales, what I was like- What did they sound like? Oh God, <laughs> like give me the creeps because we're here. They're just like like crying, like so, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like despair, like she, you know what I mean? Yeah, see not, this is what I mean. Yeah. I was telling them earlier, I'm like, people see her and they're like, we know. Yeah, like you just know. Well, fellas, we've arrived. Yes. Wow, you're gonna run out park. We made it, we're here. The Crying Woman. A popular Spanish tale about a woman who cries for her lost children along the river. A little bit of revisionist history mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Sounds quite sweet when you put it that way. <laughs> it yeah. does. We should probably go look over there by the swing set, right? Oh yeah. That'll yeah, be let's fun. Do it. Let's go. Where is it? <laughs> Down it's, it's right under that horrifying <laughs> bridge. What's well, also funny when you kind of see these places and you know, oh, this is where I'm gonna lose it later. Your virginity? Yeah, my virginity. <laughs> <laughs> Which reminds me, I have something to tell you guys. I was hoping I had some very special plans for you this evening. <laughs> Llorona's myth has largely been seen as a moralistic and cautionary tale that is meant to keep men, women, and children all on their best behavior. For example, children are cautioned not to play too close to waterways and to get back home before dark for fear that La Llorona would get them. Okay, so here's the playground. This is where she would prey on children. More like a playground. Who would think that this is a good idea though? Are you saying, Curly, that you think it's a bad idea to build a playground? Who, where I this... mean, if you know the story, why would you be like, you know it would be great, actually? 
This is like the part that you bring your kid when you hate them. Like, hopefully she'll get them. I'm scanning the park right now for heat signatures. I'm not sure if La Llorona would show up. Is she a spirit? Is she a demon? I'm not really sure. But is that noise? Yeah, do you hear that? It said that children should be very cautious when they're in this park. Obviously, we're all grown men, so maybe we could act like children, or we have brought some things that may bring out the inner child in us. Here you go, Shane. I have here a photo of you as a child. That's me. And there I am. Look, we kind of look similar. Best yeah, buds. Do. Best buds. Jeez. <laughs> right now, we're calling out to the entity that calls itself La Llorona. La Llorona. The Wailing Woman. Look at this boy with these pinchable cheeks. It's me now. I'm him. <laughs> Look at that. <gasps> oh my That's God. when his head was the size of a melon and not the size of an exercise ball. All right. Shane, what if we pretended we were children? Okay. This is it. actually, I'm not trying to make a mockery of this. I think if maybe we, well, I was thinking gonna... I could maybe push you in the swing. Wow, I can't believe we're at the park here. Look at this big tall friend of mine. Yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite place to be. I'm gonna push you on the swing now. It would be really bad if something came out and did something to me, like dragged me into the water until I couldn't breathe anymore and ceased to exist. Push your friend Curly too. <laughs> oh, I could push Curly too, yeah. Uh-oh. -uh. Wait, why, why is Curly a 40-year-old man? <laughs> well, we're gonna look in other parts of this park. Maybe you'll find us there. Maybe you won't. But remember, we used to be these boys. <laughs> and we're still tasty. At least one source says the legend of the weeping woman is very strong in Las Cruces, where locals are reportedly very superstitious and claim to spot La Llorona crying and walking along the river. With that being said, we'll end our investigation in the same fashion that many locals have encountered her, by each of us walking alone along the riverbank, hoping for a face-to-face -face encounter with the famous and deadly La Llorona. So Curly's out there doing his solo walkthrough. He is doing his first solo walkthrough. He seems pretty excited. Yeah, maybe because he's never done one before. Alrighty y'all, so I am walking now by myself within my lonesomeness. So I am not really scared. I'm kind of just like, come on, like let's see what you got, girl. Where you at? And I'm not trying to provoke nobody. I'm not trying to make you angry or nothing. I mean, look, Yorona. How dope would it be if we showed the world that you were here, you know what I'm saying? We should call you my little Yorona Chiona. If what you did is true, it's pretty fucked up. Are you genuinely concerned about this walkthrough? This investigation? I don't, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't seen any signs yet, but you know, you never know. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. I keep like thinking that I see something, but like, I think they end up being like trash bins. I think Curly's on his way back here. How do you think he fared? Probably fine. I can see maybe the silence getting to him. You know, he is very perceptive when it comes to energies and stuff. So that is true. He may have felt something out there. I feel like we, we haven't heard him though. Are you here? Hello? I feel like now's a good moment to spook me. I kind of have gotten a little gassy walking up and down this river. Oh, here he is. It's cold out there, guys. Yeah? Yeah, I know. It's super cold. You seem awfully chipper. Yeah, I mean, it was a lovely walk. <laughs> yeah. Seeing as how that's the first thing you said, you mentioned the cold, I can't imagine that actually anything happened, right? I kept thinking that I would see things and be like, <gasps> and then I would look and be like, oh, it's a trash can. The shadow is playing tricks in your mind. Yes. Kind or of I'm like, I see walking, and then I, I'm like, oh, that's my shadow. You know what I mean? I'm going to go uh, jump out there and do yes. my own thing now. Oh, what's, oops, I'm setting an alarm on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm walking to find my old pal. The Wailing Woman, La Llorona. Hope she's out here. I'm approaching the uh, spooky bridge that we walked under earlier. God, I'd love it if this lady showed up and just drowned my ass. Can you imagine? I'm gonna walk out to the river here. This is where the lady is said to be. Do you think Shane is out there screaming right now? Like He's probably doing some stupid bit where he's pretending he's a kid. Oh, hey there, miss. Uh, it's just me, uh, a little boy. I'm out here all alone at night. Oh, I sure hope some lady doesn't show up and kill me. Check this out. Oh, sure would love a, a little lemon soda. Maybe some uh, peppermint sticks. 
Oh, one thing I don't want is to be murdered tonight. Uh, and then he'll move on from that. He'll start wailing. Mm -hmm. And then when that eventually fails, he's going to move to his, his old standby of asking La Llorona to murder him in various ways. Oh, I sure would be bummed if a lady showed up and drowned my ass right now. Fill my lungs up with water, why not? Uh, I'm sure you'd like to shut me up. Sure you, sure you've heard plenty from me tonight. I know you had Sweet Curly out here before me and you're going to have the timid man come out here after me. But uh, I'm really probably the biggest get out of the bunch. Hey! I'm back. Yes! Let me guess, I'm not gonna like it out there? I really liked it. Yeah, it was a good walk. It's a good walk. What'd you do? Uh, <laughs> I tried to appeal to that lady's interests. Yeah. She wasn't having it. Well, Ryan, I think you're gonna have a good time. Yeah, I think so too. That'll be fun. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tap into my childhood self. Oh my. Okay, I'm pretty far out now. Mommy, can somebody help me find my mom? Mom, mama. Oh God, it is pitch black out here. There is nothing but me. Um, what do you think he's doing? Being nervous and talking to the air and... He's probably super scared, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Doing that kid bit, pretending I was a kid again, actually made me even more scared. It reminded me of how I used to feel when my mom would tell me about you. I think I'm gonna break out the spirit box seeing that now I'm in the middle of nowhere. Hello. My name is Ryan. Who's out here with me? I'm reaching out to the spirit of La Llorona. What? What was that? What? Who's out here with me? It's all me, just me by myself. Now's your chance. I'm talking to you, La Llorona. If you're real, tell me why you did it. Why did you do that to your children, to your niños? I just want to know. Maybe I could help you. Lots of twists. Lots of twists. I'm turning it off. You know, this was kind of liberating. I feel like I just stood up to a childhood bully. All right, let's get back into the warmth. I actually forgot I was cold. Hey! Oh. What up? How'd it go? It went good, it went good. Did you see anything? I got a female voice that said, it was a twist. All I know is that my mom saw her. I gave her the perfect opportunity to get a two for one Bergara special. That's true. And she blew it. I, I guess the ghoul boys prevail again. This time. Oh, this time. This what time. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Scary. The legend of La Llorona has loomed large in Latinx cultures for lifetimes. To this day, she remains a huge part of the culture. Her story will continue to haunt children and adults alike, but with so many different interpretations and legends surrounding the weeping woman. Whether she still wanders the world in search of her lost children remains unsolved.